All right. Hello, Leo. How's everybody doing today? Thank you so much for being patient as I was getting set up here. I'm looking forward to reading for you today and uh, really feel some great messages coming through. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at yesterday's cancer reading, you probably should look at the beginning of it because we talked about uh, the Lionsgate portal, which just opened up and we'll talk a little bit about it today as well. Uh, it's a really powerful time for manifestation. And even though we're kind of like a day into that, there's still some wonderful energy that can kind of come through for you. And one of the things that we want to be really mindful of right here and right now is the power of thoughts, um, particularly having thoughts that are expansive and positive and affirming. And so we're going to be looking at ways to really build upon possibilities as we look at your reading today, because that energy is still coming through and uh, being the lion's gate, it's something that's really important for you as well. Um, just a quick programming note, probably starting with um, this month and the rest of next month, I'm just going to do, um, I think, collectives every Sunday if people like it. So if that's something that you like, let me know in the comments later below. Uh, but yesterday was kind of an exception to the rule and people showed up thinking it was a collective. So I think I'm just going to do Sunday collectives um, next month and we'll, we'll kind of pilot it. But the rest of this month, every Sunday is a collective. So join in and uh, let me know if that's something you would like. All right, let's talk a little bit about today, what to expect. My name is Nicholas Ashball. And um, again, we'll be looking at Leo. You can use this reading for sun, rising, and for moon, Venus as well. If you're very uh, experienced in astrology, you can look at any aspect of your chart, actually. A um, couple of other things to note here. Uh, though this will take you through to the next six to eight weeks. So if you're watching it live, what we're going to look at here in just a minute with the channel messages probably will um, be something that you can connect with. And as we look at the cards, it may actually start to become more relevant as you go through this month and next. So um, these are all kind of, I'm, I'm reading in August and September is when a lot of this action will happen. So feel free to come back here as needed and more may resonate as the month continues. Uh, let's see. The way that this is organized is in a few major parts here. I start with channeled messages. I have these in front of me. That's what I was taking a couple of minutes to finish up. And channeled messages are when I connect with spirit in uh, totems, in dreams, and channeled writing, and a lot of different modalities. I don't just use tarot. I use a lot of other methods. So we start with that. Then we um, validate a lot of that in the, in the Celtic cross that I'll pull afterwards, which I just kind of let the universe come through in whichever way it should. We're not going to really say that this has to be love or it has to be career. It's going to be whatever needs to come through. After that, I'll look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. So you actually do get to look at some of those areas um, in an expanded fo fo forecast. Uh, and then after that, we will uh, go a little bit deeper into the soul path. We'll do a mini review before that, but then the soul path will be a place where we can look for what's missing or we can enhance what's really looking great once we've seen the Celtic cross. Um, then we'll meditate. And at the very end, I will answer a silent question that you send to me. It's kind of like a pick a card, but it's just going to be one card and you meditate on it. All right. So that's the format. There's a lot that you can uh, kind of take in on this one. This is probably the equivalent of what other readers would do in like four different readings. Um, so feel free, like I said, to watch it in pieces, to watch it several times. You'll get a lot out of it with each return view. I will put time codes, but it usually takes me a day to get the codes in there and one to two days to get all of the the recap stuff uh, sort of on my social media platform. So be patient. I'm just one person. Sometimes people think I have a team and it's just me. And when I do back, uh, back readings, it can take a couple of days. All right. So let's uh, talk a little bit about one more thing here. If you like what you see here and you, you would like me to do that extra reading, that'll take us to 16 a month if I do the uh, extra reading uh, on each Sunday, basically, then show some support. Uh, you can do that by most easily just sort of hitting a thumbs up and subscribing. It'll help my channel grow. It'll help other people find this. It's free, free for you, free for me. Um, if you'd also like to show some support here in real time, you can do it through Super Chat. It's this little icon here. Um, it does help quite a bit and I appreciate it. Later on replay, there's a super thanks. It's right by the share icon. All of these are optional, but uh, again, it's a great way to say thank you and a great way to give back. All right, let's get into the reading for today. We're going to start off with your spirit totem. And the spirit totem is basically um, a way for you to connect to the highest possible um, energy available to you. So let me just uh, bring through your spirit totem today. You're going to kind of smile when you see what it is. Um, so what I picked up on today for you was a field mouse, <laughs> our cute little guy uh, that sometimes gets a bad rap. But uh, for many of you that have lived in the city, sometimes you see these scurrying around the streets at nighttime. If you happen to be 
close to an open field. I think they can also be called like a vole with a V. Um, you know, there's a lot of different names for this, but the little furry brown cute mice. And actually when you look at them, they're quite cute. Um, you know, I don't necessarily want one running through my house, but when I see it out in nature, I have no, um, no opposition to it existing. Um, they're cute and they actually have some interesting things that I didn't even know about until I did some of the research today. So, uh, okay, so your totem today is the field mouse. And um, what we want to talk about with this is that, yes, uh, oftentimes these are misunderstood creatures. They are, however, intelligent, they are fast, and they're also very resourceful. Uh, so I like it as a totem. We'll talk a little bit about the good and maybe some of the challenges with it. We're going to start with the interesting facts, because, you know, I always like to dig into a totem a little bit and understand it. So it may not sound fast, but when you look at the size of the mouse compared to uh, our size, uh, I did the calculations. Uh, basically, they go eight miles per hour. They can run that fast, which is about 12.8 kilometers for those of you not in the United States. And um, it's the equivalent of a human, if you kind of scale it up, running about 160 miles per hour or 257 kilometers per hour. They're fast. That's why if you're trying to catch one with a broom or a box or something, you're going to have a hard time. Those things run really, really quickly. So speed is something that is um, definitely coming through. And again, for those of you that watched my Sunday reading uh, when I read on the Lionsgate, uh, one of the things that the Lionsgate reminds us is about the ability to manifest things a little bit quicker, faster than you might think. So I like that this totem came right on the heels of that Lion Gate opening, Lion's Gate opening. And um, basically, uh, if you want to look at, like I said, yesterday's reading, you can see that. But what what that gate opening meant was um, there were like there's three stars that align with the pyramids in Egypt in Orion's belt. And um, and Sirius is also a piece of this. But basically, uh, when all of those stars kind of align, there's an opening which allows more energy to come through. It's still a good time to manifest. You can still set some intentions today. That energy, I actually felt it before, and I think it's just like Mercury retrograde based on how I'm energetically picking up on it. There's like a pre-gate, um, and then there's like a post-gate kind of energy. So take advantage of it now, all right? The, I think the mouse came through today because it wanted to remind you to pick up the pace. Um, to speed up things a little bit. Um, release any fear around either success or failure because it can cut both ways and just start moving towards your goal or your goals if there's more than one, okay? And uh, things will start, start to manifest for you quickly if you allow them to, to do so because sometimes um, you basically um, can almost will something not to happen or to be slower because you start to think or say, oh, it's going to take forever, or this is never going to happen, or I have bad luck with this. So sometimes I'll read for someone and they just say, like, I have bad luck in, um, you know, relationships. Well, you just created and spoke that truth into being. Why don't we kind of reframe it to say, I'm improving my uh, you know, relationship with men or with women or with children or whatever it is that you're trying to kind of like connect to better and uh, state the energy of improvement rather than the past history that you're now kind of pushing into the future. All right. So start to think that things will move faster and easier and they will. And thanks. Someone just clarified that there is a little window of time with the gate staying open. So use that window right now. And I think this week you can start to see things move in a positive traje uh, trajectory. All right. This was fascinating. I uh, I honestly feel like the more that I work with the totems here, it's almost like I'm, I'm learning about horticulture and biology and geography and all this stuff on geology. Okay, so mice, we, you've heard the little peeps and squeaks and chirps that they make, right? It's almost like a computer. I know that sometimes when I walk outside, if I've heard one in a bush or something, I think, what's that little, it sounds like a computer chirping. Apparently, they also use ultrasonic um, vocalizations that are beyond the human ear, um, so they speak in a high frequency. Again, a misunderstood totem. Yeah, it's not the cleanest. It's not the most popular. It's a little messy, but it does have a high frequency energy or it wouldn't come through as a totem for you today. And the big message from the mouse besides speed is frequency, like how elevated your speech is. And uh, it's a really powerful piece of it. So um, we'll talk about that in a second. The other thing that I found really interesting is that they sing to attract their mates, like a songbird. Um, let me see, I actually have a little clip here. I'll see if it plays for you, but I was surprised 
um, to to hear this sort of song like <laughs> uh, sound coming from the mouse. So let's see if I can get it coming up here. Um, you know, never underestimate or judge an animal or a totem. You can let me know if you can hear this, but um, there you go. It sounds like a songbird, right? <laughs> Um, so I don't know if that came through. I can post it later on social media, but, um, but yeah, it has this sort of nice warbling sound that you would hear if you were out in the forest or the meadow. So, uh, I, I was just kind of fascinated that they have these different tones to their communication. Okay. So what does this mean for us to use high frequency communication as a way of inspiring others and attracting the best partnerships and the best opportunities? What does high frequency mean? Because it gets thrown around a lot. It means that instead of uh, saying negative things about other people, instead of using words that are base and basic and kind of cruel sometimes, we want to speak in a way that is inspirational, that is positive, that is affirmational. Um, basically, something that you would want to hear to cheer you up, not something that's going to pull you down. Um, now, what happens here is in, in the planet at this time, you know, sometimes people aren't in that frequency. They're not open to all of that. So they may not hear you that you could come sometimes fall on deaf ears. But that being said, um, the people that are supposed to hear you will. And if you need to adjust your message to fit the crowd that you're with at that time, you can do that. There may be a little bit of, of uh, sort of like working a different message for different channels. Uh, back in the past when I was studying journalism, I, uh, I, I took a lot of classes in PR too. And one of the things that you have to do is kind of change your message, just like you would for like a resume or website or LinkedIn profile or whatever. You're going to change how you group the, the information for different audiences. So, um, so yes, don't be afraid to make something more concise. Like if you're going to work with children, they need to get it faster. They don't want to listen to someone talk forever, <laughs> shorter attention spans. So you're going to bring it into a shorter focus. It's kind of like if I do stuff on TikTok, I have one minute or three minutes. It's, it's a little more challenging. So I have to really get to the point quickly. Um, so think about who you're talking to and how to adjust. It doesn't mean that you have to go lower in frequency. It just may mean shorter and still high frequency or taking the end and bringing it to the beginning, kind of like what you would see in a movie trailer where they kind of tease what, what it's all about. So think in the, the terms of trailers when you're working with kids or uh, people with short attention spans, you can still keep something high frequency, but less of it perhaps. Um, now, the fact that we're talking about ultrasonic uh, communication also means that some of you may have an ability to connect more to your clair audience. There's a bunch of different clairs. Um, like, uh, you know, we'll, you can, we'll go into it later, but clear audience is basically the ability to hear in spirit. And I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, clairvoyance is the most common one. Um, there's also clairsentience. Clairvoyance is seeing, clairsentience is feeling, clear audience is hearing. There's a bunch of other ones like smelling, tasting, all of that. Um, I actually list some of them in my book too, if you want to go through it, there's at least seven of them. Um, so what I want to talk with clear audience is that it's not always about hearing it in your eardrum. Uh, the way that it can sometimes work for many of you could just be a voice in your head, a little thought that you have. Um, if you really connect with it, it's the equivalent of putting in earbuds or uh, headphones. When you put the headphones on, you hear the sound in your head. Um, so it's sort of like a broadcasted within. And that's my best explanation that I can give you for clear audience sound. Um, so you won't need the um, earbuds and you don't necessarily need to hear it in your ears. You can hear it in your head. And it's kind of like it's being broadcasted from a, um, a microphone in your head. Um, that's one way. Sometimes you can hear a whisper. Um, for me, it usually comes in one ear. I think it's sometimes my left ear, um, which is interesting. I have a mic off to the left and a couple of times here, uh, I've caught whispers on the mic. Um, so spirit will kind of whisper here and whisper into the mic sometimes. So um, when you're picking up on the skills, they can it, it'll come through in a different way for many of you. So um, I have an intuitive development series, so you can check that out. But if you want to play around a little bit with working with your guides this month, get into a quiet space, listen, and see what you might be able to pick up on. Um, the way it will sound will be different for, for each of you. So just kind of work with your own skills. If you're a musician, if you are trying to think of something different, like you might be able to pick up on tones and frequencies and lyrics and things like that. I believe that all writers, artists, musicians, 
honestly, all of us, we have that ability to connect to it. So if you're a composer and you wake up hearing something, it's clear audience. If you wake up in the morning and your internal voice tells you you need to call your mom or you need to do your bill, pay your bills or whatever, it's a different form of clear audience. Um, so each of us can tap into it. We can either hear our voice, another voice. We can hear music. We can pick up on something um, that just kind of like triggers us. And that's that's basically what it is. OK, so for each of you, it's going to be a little bit different. OK, but your clear skills, cl basically clear is clarity, clear. Um, you're going to be able to get into intuition much easier, especially for those of you watching right now. So I want you to trust that. OK. Um, the other thing that came through, and this is again because mice communicate in a, in a tone that our ears can't hear. Um, sometimes what you hear, uh, sometimes you hear what you want to hear, and sometimes other people only hear what they want to hear, even if you're speaking, you know, <laughs> loud and clear. So open your mind to different interpretations and different possibilities. And when you hear something, talk to the person and make sure that you interpreted it correctly because communication is like two or three different things. There's, there's the words that travel to your ear, then there's the computation in your brain, and then there's sort of like the analysis that's also happening. And so what you wanna do is give feedback and say, I think I heard this, is that what you mean or did you mean this? Clarify it and make sure that you're clarifying that someone heard you the right way. Just say, Let, um, tell me, did, what did you hear? Did, do you understand the message, especially if it's instructions? Um, or do you, do you understand my point of view? Is it clear? Does that make sense? Does it resonate? I think it's always good to follow up with those sort of clarifying um, questions to make sure, and that's going to help you out because the quote unquote deafness that I, that we have to, to the mice, it's more of a symbol here that, that sometimes we don't hear or we don't pick up or we're not paying attention to what people are saying. So we miss something. So don't miss it. And that's what the mice was, uh, the mouse was bringing through or the mice are bringing through. All right. Um, don't wear yourself out. When I did some research on the lifespan of mice, they're basically um, only five months, some of them, so half a year. What this means for all of you right now is we're at the midpoint. We have about that much time left in the year. I think this next half of the year is going to um, feature a faster moving sort of energy. And what that means is that windows of opportunity will open and close rapidly. So if you sit on the fence and worry about something or don't kind of like take action um, in a uh, sort of fast enough fashion, you could miss something. And I don't want you to miss out on something. Uh, the next piece here was mice have a really big appetite. They consume a lot. And sometimes, you know, they consume too much. And so what we want to look at is resource management. And for many of you, you want to be planning uh, a nest egg. And for many of you that if that's way in the future, you're, you're early or mid-career uh, or just a student kind of starting out, really make sure that you're starting to save and invest early and often so that if and when you have a period of um, unemployment or if you're going to be in a period of transition, like starting up your business, that's something I did like six years ago, then you, you actually need a nest egg because you don't always make money the first year. I know I didn't. Um, I had to pull on my resources. So I, I needed two years to kind of get everything started up because there's a lot of startup costs when you have a business and you don't always break even until year two or three. Um, so plan for things in the future so you can have, have that buffer there when you need it. In the here and the now, like looking at next week, next month, um, the end of this year, just plan for a little bit extra. Put in a contingency plan when I used to help with producing. Um, that's something that you'd always want to put in your budget is a contingency um, aspect. So you would have, uh, you would ask for more than you need. You would have maybe an extra 10, 15, 20% on the budget. <clears throat> and then you could go into the contingency if something ran late, ran over, or you didn't account for something. So we all need that contingency plan. All right. Mice are not known for being tidy. <laughs> so one of the themes that uh, wasn't popular when I put it as one of the weekend um, collectives, but it's kind of been coming up thematically was to clean up messes and to get organized. Um, we talked a lot of, about clean, clearing your mind out the other day and the importance of staying uh, sort of like mentally and cognitively clear. So that comes through again with this particular message. If you don't know what you're trying to say or what you want, it's very difficult for other people to, to be able to get on board, <clears throat> excuse me, or to understand what your point of view is. 
So spend some time to organize your thoughts. That's what I do beforehand. I'd rather be one or two minutes late and have all the cards in front of me than to try to wing it. So it's important to have that uh, homework, that research. I show up about an hour to an hour and a half to do this extra little research before we start the show, just so that I'm here and I'm, I'm, um, I'm aware and I'm kind of already picked up on the energy before the cards even uh, take place. So that's why it's important, okay? Uh, let's see here. Okay, this is just a great bumper st sticker, mantra, t-shirt theme, you know, leave things better than they were when you found them across the board. Uh, if you live in an apartment, don't like, you know, bust it up and make a mess of it and then move out and not expect to have to pay charges on that. If you're in a relationship, you should leave the other person in a better place than it was than the two of you were when you found each other. Um, everything across the board, try to improve things. Uh, otherwise, why are you doing it? This is really important in day to day conversations. If what you have to say or add or share is going to hurt the other person in a way that isn't constructive, um, why are you saying it? Hold back. Um, wait for a better time. Wait when they, and, until you both are in a place where it's going to be better received. Always leave it better. And if not, just leave <laughs> because it's probably not worth the, the um, investment of time and you may regret it later. Okay. So the mouse, um, field mouse actually brought through some wonderful messages today about speed, about tidying things up, about the frequency of speech, about the resourceful energy, and also about the brevity and the sort of like very, very, um, imp I, I would say for many of you, if a window opens right now, you, you need to go through that opportunity. You don't want to wait. It might pass you by. Someone else may be faster and just come in and get it. So um, there you go. It's important right now to act quickly. The next piece that I want to talk about is uh, what I was picking up in dreams just before I woke up, and it had to do with the feeling of being on um, autopilot or cruise control. Um, basically, when you just push a button and you're not sort of like either steering the car or adjusting the speed as much. Uh, but what I saw happening during this period of time was falling asleep, getting disengaged, maybe going in the wrong direction. So what I want you to do this month is very much like the chariot. Take the wheel and drive. Take control, set some direction, say what that direction is, and really go with that. Um, stay awake. Stay awake at the wheel. No time to sleep. It's dangerous for you. It's dangerous for others. You also might miss out on an opportunity. And when you are actively driving, shifting, moving, looking, you're going to be more engaged in the task. But when you sort of like phone it in um, or just go on that autopilot, then mistakes start to happen and it's not your best um, not your best effort, not your best work. And so when we start to go on autopilot in everyday life, what happens sometimes is um, we're just not really connected to uh, the task at hand. Maybe we've gone through all the lessons that we were supposed to learn initially and and we're just still sticking around for some reason. So you have encouragement, permission, and a nudge from the universe this month if you're disengaged, with something or falling asleep at that task or in the relationship or whatever to reevaluate if it's for you and reevaluate like why that's happening. Course correct if needed. Um, why would you keep going down the wrong path if you know you're going down the wrong path? <laughs> I think back to like when I first started to learn how to drive and I just kind of, <laughs> I was really young, but I kept going on a road for a while and I just got further and further lost. And I kept hoping that I would see something that, I mean, again, I was very young, um, that would be familiar. But the best thing to do is to pull over. This was pre-GPS, everyone, and it was pre-maps. -pre so if you're already lost, you're not going to be able to find yourself based on, like, if you don't know where you're at. So anyway, the best thing to do would be to ask for help. And I didn't even put that piece in there. So that was like when I was, whenever you get your driver's permit, <clears throat> I don't know, 16, 17, 18. I was still learning how to, to figure out kind of navigation. And now I'm in a big city where there's nothing but highways. So I obviously got through that. Um, but there is a, a you know, it's a, there's an importance to just stopping, evaluating, asking, also learning and mapping something out too. kind of doing the homework so that you're not just driving into the unknown. Um, that's one thing like with the fool card that can be a little bit dangerous is just moving without knowledge or preparation. I do want you to move, but I, I think it's really important to get a feel for who you are, what you want, and where you're going. Um, and the final thing here is once you are kind of like more experienced, I'm at a point now where I've been like, I've been in California for about 20 years. I know the streets better than the GPS can tell me like which route to tell to go. So when you've driven a lot and you know like the back roads, you know the shortcuts, you know which one's going to have more traffic, 
Um, the GPS may say, take this. And they want to make, they want to make you like go left across three or four rows of traffic. You're like, that is not what I'm going to do. I'm going to go this way and do that. Trust your GPS. This is um, also less about traffic and more about people in your life. There may be someone that's telling you, just do this. It'll be easy. But you know, this is your GPS, by the way, your third eye. It's saying that is not a shortcut. That's going to have repercussions. I'm going to do what I need to do here, or I'm going to work with this person instead of that person because it's more efficient and it's going to be less of a headache in the long run. So trust your third eye. This whole kind of rant about GPS is, you know, um, through your own experiences, through your own higher self, what you need to be doing. If you don't ask for help and learn from that experience. And in the future, you'll have more of that GPS internally. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> finally, we have this note about uh, bridges. So I was shown a bridge and it was under re uh, repair or it was in disrepair. So I would say, if you're going to leave something this month, a job, a relationship, again, an apartment, something, um, I want you to try to leave with a clean conscience and with um, without blowing up the bridge, basically. So you can do it in a way that leaves the door open like eight of cups just in case you need to reconnect with that person don't burn any bridges you can also repair something if it didn't quite go the way you wanted it to you could just say hey i think we should just kind of let's have a chat again this this didn't kind of like end up the way i wanted it to it was a bad day try to go back one more time and sort things out uh for many of you that that will give you a chance to kind of clear the water and so there you go some great messages this month for your sign um, just coming through psychically. Now let's take a look at the cards and see what else will come through. Again, if you missed anything, I'll do a mini review at the, cent the center portion here. I'll also put a photograph up on my social media platforms, which by the way, um, you can follow me on. I'll put a link here in just a second. Normally I, I post that link. Let me do that right now for those of you that are interested. Um, and uh, yeah, usually, like I said, about a day after I am finished with the live reading, I will post these to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and my website, among other places. So there you go. There's the pin link if you like it. Welcome, everybody. How are you doing? Hopefully good. All right, we're going to look at the cards here in just a moment, um, focusing on messages to help us through the positive, the challenges, all the in-between, all right? I'm going to be quiet now and focus on the cards. Be right back afterwards to talk about everything with you. So we have the Chariot and Eight of Cups already. So some good synchronicities here. Communication coming through as well. Some great relationship cards. There's your intuition, your GPS. You have some really great cards. I'm normally quiet, but I have to just comment that there's almost no negative cards here. There's none actually. <laughs> How much good can you handle? I like what I'm seeing today for you, uh, Leo. This is some good stuff. Ready for some good stuff. It looks like there's some really great messages coming through this month for you. And I'm not one to sugarcoat. So when I see good stuff, I'll say it, including ro romance. I mean, we actually got a ton of uh, love cards here. All right. <clears throat> Let's talk about your messages. I like what I see. I'm going to say that right off the bat. Uh, okay, so we have how much good can you handle? Uh, explore the upward spiral of grace. The card is reversed. So this is sometimes speaking to our disbelief. Like, have you ever started to have some good things happen in your life and you think, how long will this last? Um, 
uh, is this, it, it, was it really meant for me? They, certainly this must be the wrong person or why are they interested in me? I want you to prune out the doubt. It actually kind of rhymes. Um, but prune out any sort of self-effacing, self-defeating or doubtful thoughts because it's counter to this message, which is there's some good stuff coming through. Explore it. Instead of a downward spiral, let's go into an upward spiral, right? So you're, you could potentially be your own worst and only potential enemy or uh, block for the positive. So stay positive and I see a, an influx of really good stuff coming through. And yes, you deserve it. Yes, you earned it. And yes, it's the right time. So when you start to say like, yes, I am ready. Yes, I am worthy. Yes, let's bring this through now. Some really amazing stuff can start to happen for you. All right. Let's look at the next piece here. Um, but so far, I really, really like that. And I think that's a solid message that we all need reminding um, of sometimes. So we have the princess of discs or the pentacles here at the center. Um, the card is reversed. So many of you may find yourself in a place where uh, you're just doing a little bit more of internal work. Whenever I see pentacles reversed in the court cards, it's about something that we need to, to work on. Now, when I think of a page or a princess card, what this is really about is sending and receiving messages. So for some of you, I talked about that heightened energy, the ability to receive more. I want you to focus on your listening skills this month. And I also want you to do something for yourself that makes you feel um, better about how you kind of connect and communicate with others. So this is kind of spoiling yourself in a good way um, and also really making sure that when you bring in uh, energy, it's something that's lifting you up because there's a sort of, uh, when I look at pentacles, sometimes it, it's it's grounded, but it also is kind of like a sponge. So I want to make sure that what you're putting into your mind, putting into your energy, what you're kind of digesting is good. So take a look around you at the people, at the opportunities, at, again, what you're sort of listening to, who you're listening to, all of that needs to be amped up a little bit. Um, you may decide to study, go back to school, et cetera. Any of the, of the pentacles court cards reverse can just show that sort of um, developmental energy. So I like it. Nothing bad with that. We have the Prince of Cups right on top of it. Prince of Cups is showing heightened sensitivity. It's also showing that you're opening up to um, more relationship energy. I'm not one to focus on it, but we got a lot of relationship energy for you today. We have four of wands in your soul space. We have the lovers reversed in the environment. And then we have the 10 of cups here in the outcome. Um, this is good. Even with some of those being reversed, it's really, really good, actually. Um, so are you open? Are you ready? Uh, are you feeling that sense of I am worthy? Because the reversal of this may be the self-doubt. So I want you to go upright and, um, and convey that self-confidence and self-worth because communication is what pages sort of deal with. So if you aren't communicating the value, then you attract someone who is going to devalue you or um, confirm those feelings so that you can get over them. So right here and right now, let's wash ourselves of any sort of self-doubt and say, I'm ready for something better and I deserve something better. And this can elevate if we want it to. But definitely, this is a great time to deal more with relationships, more with love. If you're not focusing on that, this is a really creative card and a really expressive card. So I don't want you to hold back because this is slightly reductive because it's reversed. This is very expressive. So don't hold back in your expression, basically. OK, um, yourself. People fall in love with you when you're more authentic. If you have to put up a lot of artifice or a lot of walls, it's harder to kind of get behind that and see who's there. And you usually have a feeling for someone's authentic self when they're truly being um, present, right? Mm -hmm. So please feel free to, um, to just be yourself. I think it's going to take you further. This was exactly what I was talking about in my channeled messages. Take the wheel and drive. Um, the chariot in reverse is showing that for some of you, you may have simply allowed someone to, to do more of the speaking, more of the talking, more of the decision making. And this is, for many of you, it could hit in different areas, whether it's making sure that you're looking at the, uh, the, the accounting, the, the books, the numbers, uh, or maybe looking more at some of the legal stuff or simply just saying, I want or don't want to do this. No, I, I'm not going to do that. Like if it's something with career or relationship, just speak up. Um, so what we have here, it's a kind of, it's a really important combination of things, valuing who you are and enough so to express yourself clearly and in doing so, regain control over things. There's definitely a connection with those three. 
In recent past, we have Queen of Cups. Once you start to do this, you, you, you elevate here. You become something stronger. Queen of Cups is not afraid to say what they want. I was talking to um, a couple of old coworkers and then a family member about sort of like how different I have, like my, my journey now versus when I left my job many, many years ago in 2015. Um, I kind of lost my voice at that point in time because I spent so much time helping other people. And um, I was very shy because I was in a really restrictive environment. And um, if anybody now watched me on, they wouldn't know who I was because I was, I was kind of like that mouse. I was quiet. I got things done. I didn't cause any trouble. But, um, but I had a lot of thoughts and a lot of feelings and a lot of energy. And eventually I just had to kind of like burst out of that. So when I did, then I went kind of like this from the knight to the queen. So you can do the same thing. You can definitely get into that stronger energy, but it may involve pulling out of something and not being afraid of what people might think if you speak your truth. So in a relationship, it's as easy as just saying, um, I, I'm really ready to do this for me. Maybe it's you're like a parent and, um, you know, your children are now at college or, you know, or maybe you've just recently split up with someone and you're in a place where you think, wow, I have a lot of space and time and energy to focus on myself. That's a good thing. And you can start to find uh, ways to heal and ways to grow. So this is a good time wherever you're at. We'll look at relationships in a second, but this is basically about owning your feelings and really being strong and really being open and not being afraid, no holding back. It's one of the big things that came through. I talked about bridges. We got a bridge. And I, and I specifically mentioned the Eight of Cups, and this is a great Eight of Cups. This is such an unusual um, version of it. I'm using the uh, True Heart Intuitive Tarot. Um, really cool deck, by the way. Uh, so if you want to check it out, it's on my website. There's a link to it. Um, but with this one, what I like about it is it's a bridge towards expansiveness because we see Jupiter in the horizon, uh, but the bridge is intact. And the Eight of Cups, one of the messages with Eight of Cups is an, um, an open door to come back if you want to. Oftentimes this, this can show a sabbatical, like a leave of absence. It can be deciding to break up but remain friends with someone. Um, it's basically a very amiable and open door. You're not going to throw away the key. You're, gonna, you're not even going to shut the door. You're going to keep it open just in case you need to go back there. So I de we definitely see that. But I feel like, le like stepping away from something doesn't mean deserting. Um, it, it's you moving towards a new opportunity. So uh, kind of meditate on this image. It's really nice. And it's showing you that something awaits you. It's calling to you, something bigger. Jupiter is about expansion. Um, and just because you move towards that uh, does not mean that you can't come back to something or that you're deserting someone. So I see a higher calling for some of you, and there's a chance to take some time off and figure out, does this feel right for me? Is this what I want? Really nothing negative with that. I would say the only thing for some of you to be mindful of is if you are trying to say no or end something, this is not a full stop. This is not um, a, a proper ending. This is more of a ellipse, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> see what happens. Um, you know, So like I would say, it's important for you to be very clear if you do or don't want something to state that because this can be ambiguous and it is reversed. So if you want to fully quit and never go back somewhere, then cut your ties. If you fully want to not be with someone because it was an abusive relationship or it wasn't what you signed up for, then change your number, delete theirs and move on because the eight of cups is an open door. So. If you want the open door, it's great and it's going to help you, um, you know, reconnect. If you quit, people are going to ask you to stay. But there's a test here. What do you want? So really focus on what you want. Do you want the open door? Or do you want to close it? That's something only you can decide. I can just see that there's a potential for it to stay open. And I'm going to encourage you to do the work to figure out what you want. I'm here to guide you, not to tell you what to do. All right. We have the Queen of Swords here in the near future. This is great. This is all about communication. This is why uh, the cute little mouse came through and basically said, elevate your frequency, but understand in doing so that sometimes you'll be ahead of the curve. Think of musicians that you love that were way ahead of their time um, or that make timeless work, but maybe at the time it wasn't quite understood. Um, so there's that sort of possibility sometime uh, that you might have to repeat it, not because uh, not because you're not speaking clearly, but because you're ahead of it. And then remember what I said that you might want to edit or reorganize what you're saying, not lower the frequency, but maybe take it into a more digestible piece. Mice eat little pieces, right? So smaller spurts and more frequently might be better than one big download. 
back when I used to do this channel and, um, you know, I started the YouTube channel in 2013, but 2015 is when I really started doing monthlies. I used to wait 30 days and then I would throw all 12 videos at once and you wouldn't hear from me for 30 days. That made no sense. It was a lot of work for me. It was a long wait for you. So now I do these little tiny videos in, but not little tiny, they're big, but I do frequently, I, I show up and it's a lot better. So think about just showing up more and rather than having to do all of this stuff at once, um, share it, share it as a work in progress. There's sometimes this perfectionist energy that can come through. So you have what it takes right now to just kind of put it out there and get some feedback on it. All right. I like what I see. Um, there's definitely a potential this month for relationships to, to come through. One thing before we get there, you're going to need to be ready to say what you want in that relationship. And the queen of swords upright is direct without being confrontational. Perfect perfect uh, that she's upright, perfect that she's in the near future, perfect that she also connects us to what we want, um, to the Ten of Cups here. But the Ten of Cups was reversed, and a lot of your relationship cards are kind of in different, um, some are upright, some are reversed, so let's talk about that. All right, so um, we have the Four of Wands here. Uh, love this as a representative of you in your soul, in your ego, in your self position in the, in the Celtic Cross. People are drawn to you. You have a good reputation. You have a good energy. You have a good sort of magnetism. I like this. I like this showing up for you. This can show that if you're in a relationship, it can go deeper. If you've started a new friendship, it has the potential to be one of those really good friends that sticks with you through thick and thin. And most importantly, if you're not sort of in this sort of energy yet, hold space for it. Because in many decks, you'll see the four of wands empty, but it's the it's the space for a future partner to come in. Partnership plays a big role this month. You've got a lot of people cards. You have a lot of partnership cards. And we'll break that down as we go into the expanded forecast. But is it a good time for relationships? You bet. Can, I, I actually don't think you can get away from people this month. I forgot to write about this in the, the field mouse uh, sort of cards here because there's only so much time to prepare. But they're very social. Mice in general. So are rats. Um, they like to be around... Um, others of their kind, but mice in particular. So this is a time for you to be more kind of community-based, family-based, to get out there a little bit, okay? Let's look at the environment. It's it's hand in hand with what we just looked at. So we have the lover's card. The lover's card was reversed. So what we're seeing here, again, could be some of this uh, limiting or doubt-based thoughts. By the way, thank you so much for all the support. I appreciate that. Um, so with this, how much good can you handle? I feel like there's some opportunity knocking. If you're not looking for love, there could be uh, a job opportunity. There could be some sort of a new friendship that, that pops into your life. People want to work with you, be with you. You're going to have a hard time being a hermit this month. You got, you got all the social cards, um, four of wands, lovers, and the 10 of cups. All we're missing here is like two of cups but or three of cups, but you got most of the other ones, which I like. So imagine that you are on the same sort of level as the other person. So some of you may have an issue thinking someone's out of your league. This is in the environment. So you may, you may look up to someone and think, I really want to spend time with them. I really see myself with them, but I feel like they're not in, like I, I'm not in their league or they're out of my league. So just work on yourself. Here's one of the cool things. Um, if, if you see someone, and it doesn't have to be romantic, by the way, this can just be you know, inspirational. Uh, not everything that I read is love. And even though love's coming through a lot today, when we look at the love cards, this can be someone that you admire. So a mentor, a public figure, a parent, whatever. And you look at that and you think, how can I ever be half as good as that? Well, just use that as inspiration. You could be twice as good as that if you kind of put your mind to it, your heart to it. So use the inspiration and instead of jealousy um, or fear or anxiety, go towards this feeling of, wow, if they can do it, I can do it. Maybe I can surprise myself and work on that kind of energy this month. Because I see that there's someone that you look up to or um, kind of feel that energy of inspiration and use that to better yourself. Um, there may also be someone that you've met and there's a tug of war here. How serious are you re ready to, to be here? Because four of wands, lovers and 10 of cups, that's pretty serious to me. So um, you may not be ready or they may not be ready. And with this, there's going to be a, a question of pacing. I think as long as the communication between the two of you is open, you probably are going to be in an OK space. Um, the person, if it's the other person, they're sending clear, uh, clear energy and clear thoughts. And you are, too. 
I feel like you all both already know what you need to talk about. So in relationships this month, keep it real, say what you're feeling and trust that you're going to be able to work it out because we still have a really positive card in the outcome. Uh, as long as you are able to communicate in a friendship or in a relationship, and it is a lot of that coming through for you. So I'm going to go there, even though I don't normally in these readings, it's important for you to just be able to, to put it on the table. The worst that will happen is that you're not completely in alignment, but then the person, oh, okay, I, I didn't know if I was sending those signals and maybe there is something or maybe they didn't see something that way, but at least you put it out there and then you can kind of go to the next level and clear the air. So I think clearing the air is, is key here um, because it, probably there's already some perception of what needs to, to happen. Um, this is a really important time if you are a leader, like a boss or a parent, or you're just kind of like the head of this group or whatever around you, your social group, to tap in and listen to what's going on because lovers reverse means that other people may be looking at you thinking, um, I've been giving a lot of this and this, but I need some validation. I need some appreciation. I need some gratitude. So exercise all of that generosity, gratitude, and thanks this month will go a long way. It can turn this card in the upright position and people feel like they're validated and appreciated because it does feel like you have a good team around you. So just say thank you. If you don't have it yet, you're attracting it. Um, because we have the high priestess here and possibilities. What a great card to get in possibilities, right? She's like the best, that's one of the best placements here because um, the only warning that comes with the high priestess, because it's also hopes and fears, um, is you can either create what you're dreaming or what you're afraid of. So don't be afraid of things because you manifest them on some levels. Instead, think about, I want to do this. I may feel a little un uh, unnerved or uncertain about how I'm going to get there but I'm gonna figure it out because I am the high priestess. I'm gonna find a way. I will find a way to uh, accomplish this goal or this dream, particularly when it comes to working on yourself. Some of you um, may have this ability this month to release something. This can be a book, um, curriculum, public sort of announcement or speaking, something that you're doing that's, uh, you're bringing something to the whole. And I'm getting with the four of wands, the lovers and the 10 of cups, a lot of interest in you. It's a good time to sell a project, to go indie and like, like create a no, your own business or to do something where you need to get people interested in investment uh, or working with you because we've got so many communal cards. So you can take these love cards either way. I definitely see a very attractive energy around you. The most that I've seen of any of the signs that I've read this month, probably even last month. So I don't know what's going on with you, Leo, but I see something really good coming through. Now, finally, we have the Ten of Cups in reverse. Ten of Cups is probably one of the, the loveliest cards you can pull here in tarot. Now, the, the reversal of this does have some interesting connotations. As you can see with the upright Ten of Cups, it has to do with the emotional bonds that we have between friends, family, and even coworkers. With the reversal of this, many of you are in, in a place where um, you tend to over-deliver, oh, maybe even over-promise, um, but you, you put a lot of energy out to others. Also, maybe because of your kindness, generosity, or popularity, people tend to tap at your uh, your door and say, hey, let's hang out. Hey, I need to help with this. Hey, can you, can you talk? And um, you can say yes. You can also say no. You can also just say, how about tomorrow? I'm a little bit tired today, but I would love to catch up with you. It's been too long. Um, so put some limits and some boundaries. And don't be afraid to pick up the phone and do the same thing to other people. Say, you know what? I'm actually really tired. I could use someone to listen to today. Um, uh, but I need to talk first and kind of put it out there. If you've always delivered and always given the same way that we saw the lovers reversed in the environment, people might be needing that validation. So might you. So it's, it's okay for you to lean right back on people, especially for the ones that are consistently asking of you. This is going to be a good litmus test to figure out if they're, you know, there for the long run or if they're just people that like to take but not to give. Um, ultimately, I like that you have this in your final outcome because as a manifestation card, it's telling me that, yes, you can find something that you're looking for, long-term friendship, long-term long relationship maybe. I don't really associate this one with the house as much as I would the Ten of Pentacles, but somewhere or someone that you love, definitely. Um, with the reversal, there's a patience piece to it, to be patient for the right thing to come at the right time, um, to trust that, that um, you should love someone as much as they love you. One thing that I want to look at when we go into relationships um, in just a couple moments will be the balance of the relationships, the, um, the equalness here. What's cool with this is that I did get two queens. I actually like to get two queens or two kings when I'm looking at relationship energy because it shows 
equity balance. Um, so we'll look at that in just a second, but so far so good. All right, uh, by the way, the fact that I got the high priestess here uh, in possibilities definitely shows that some of you can develop your psychic skills if you would like to, or metaphysical skills. Psychic is sometimes the wrong word, but you definitely have this potential to make things happen, including that, and this is the card for psychic energy. So um, open up to it, listen to yourself. There's some messages coming through, uh, either from higher self, guides, or the universe. By the way, higher self, we all have a higher self. I had an experience about a week ago where I was connecting to a family member's higher self. And, uh, and then I had a real life conversation with them and I could validate a lot of what was coming through. That higher self conversation did come through, just like I said, kind of like in the theater of your head where you hear the voice there, but I heard their voice. And then I spoke to them using my voice in my head. That's a great way that you can practice your um, clear audience skills with your guides, with your family, with anybody that comes through. You don't have to use your voice. Using your voice and speaking out loud will take you out of your meditated state. So if you want to talk to spirit, just talk here and listen here, not necessarily here. When we try to use this, this, and this, um, the third eye gets disengaged. So that's a little tip for you that if you want to get a little bit more into spirit, you can just do it quietly, okay? And right before or um, after you wake up, uh, before you go to sleep or before, uh, right after you wake up, you're still kind of half in and half out. So that's a good time to practice spirit communication if you want to, okay? Let's move into your, um, your expanded forecast. Uh, we're going to look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. All right. So we look at health here, and we have radiance. I agree with this. Um, this is mind, body, and spirit. The card is reversed. I look at this as the solar plexus, not just the summer solstice. Um, so with the solar plexus, your power center, which is right here, um, some of you might be dealing with uh, issues with friends, family, or you know, people in your life that maybe even a boss. And what's happening is you could be having problems with digestion, um, appetite, over or under eating. There could also be things that are kind of popping through like um, uh, trapped air or gas or even like, um, what's the other thing, like ulcers. So I want you to pay attention to strengthening your core and then clearing the relationships. So none of that stuff that I just talked about happens. Because when we have blockages in the solar plexus, it's going to be like the stomach um, and the diaphragm in that area. And you really don't want to have problems popping up in that place, even some of the, um, the intestines. So let's not do that. Let's kind of get our power uh, where it needs to be. And one thing that you can do that's, that's easy is just sort of like focusing on posture and kind of activating the core as you're sitting. That makes a big difference. Uh, doing uh, Pilates, yoga, sit-ups, all of that. There's a lot of different core strengthening activities that you can do depending on your age, your fitness level, what your physician says you should or shouldn't do, all of that's going to be key. But I want you to focus on the solar plexus and then relationship power, um, being able to say what you want. That's actually the most important thing. Like if you don't want to do it, say you don't want to do it. If you want to do it, say that you want it. If you like something, particularly if we're talking about, because you've got so many love cards, when we're talking about intimacy and what you want that's an important time to sort of say, I want this or I don't want this. So speak up. It's important. And someone is going to really be grateful that you told them how to, to, to be successful. Um, so how to show up. A lot of partners just want to know, like, what do you want? Um, don't underestimate your charisma because this is, whenever I get the sun card in tarot, it is sort of like how you, um, how animated you are, how you speak. That sort of sunny disposition will go a long way. You may need to focus more on yourself. The sun reverse is actually a selfish card, but or a self um, improvement card. So it feels like some of you, before you can go into some of the great relationship energy, you have to deal with how you're sitting with yourself. How do you feel about you and where you're at in your life right now? All of these things are coming through. A lot of mental and energetic energy with it. Talked a little bit about some physical stuff. Let me look at the cards and see if there's anything else that's worth mentioning. You have so many good cards this month. I really feel like we hit on most of those issues. Um, one thing that does come through whenever I look at pentacles, to me, I often um, pay attention to eating, particularly, um, it's not bad here. If we had the king or queen reversed, I would say you really need to focus on diet, but there's something off just a little bit with the page reversed. So I would say um, look at your overall sort of eating schedule and what you're putting in, like 
the plate is almost like a pie chart. You want to make sure that there's balanced amounts of things. So work with a nutritionist if you need to. Um, there's a chance to tweak that a little and it might give you more energy. It's a resource sort of card. So uh, make sure that you're properly exercising and properly dieting this month, um, putting, putting together the right combination, and that's going to help you out. It's a really good time to start something new or to uh, take a break from something. With the Eight of Cups, you can come back to it. With the Eight of Cups, you can also start a new cycle. Making, breaking, and I'm consistently working on cycles. That's the thing. So do you like your overall trajectory? If not, like I said, stop the car and go in another direction. You should take control this month, though. And if you have a doctor or someone in your life that doesn't allow you to kind of speak up and have an active role, then look for a second opinion if you need to. The chariot is making sure that you have some sort of um, say in something. Okay? Really pretty good. The only thing that I also see here with the Ten of Cups could be going overboard with uh, consuming too much of one thing. Let's see if I can get this card is kind of stuck on the table. <laughs> Come on, Ten of Cups. There we go. Um, so with the Ten of Cups card in reverse, just like the Nine of Cups, uh, it can be going to extremes. There could be social pressure to do something. This could also just be that you're not ready to, to hang out socially because a lot of us are slowly kind of re-entering after um, months of not. And sometimes we can't because of you know, restrictions across the world. It depends on where you're at with the pandemic, but uh, do what feels right to you. Social and peer pressure, you gotta be careful of with that. All right, let's look at wealth. Uh, we have finding sanctuary, opening it to your spiritual source. Card is reversed, but it's still a really good card. And so it's safe. It's the right time to do what you need to do. Um, your spiritual source, think of the magician card, as above, so below. You are the mortal, or spirit or the physical channel that connects between the sky, the, the firmament spirit and this planet. And so we constantly are able to siphon energy into our bodies from our higher self, from our spiritual side. Then what we do with it is up to us. So with your career this month, um, with your money, with your life purpose, you have a higher calling. Um, some of you may wonder, how can I do it? Well, it looks like you have some support. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a lot of energy coming around you, but you have to reach out to some of that to, to create it. So it feels like you're ready to step into something new. The message as I look at the collected cards here is that there's more help than you may realize. Uh, we only have one resource card this month and it is reversed. So I want you to make sure that you're asking for enough if you need more help, that you're not being undervalued that you're not undervaluing yourself and that you're not overextending yourself. There's something about the balance of resources that um, I'm going to actually write it down. So I remember to look at it um, just sort of like resource management. It's been coming up a lot. Um, pentacles have either been um, underrepresented or sometimes when I, I pull it, I get a card that's imbalanced like this one. So we'll look at that. We go into the soul space in a moment. Um, what I do like right now is you have the ability to really convey your emotions in a way that excites and, and engages people around you. So when it comes to career life purpose, you're supposed to be doing something with people, many of you, because I mean, this is people, people, people. <laughs> so your connectedness and your ability to make an impact on the people around you, it's in an all, all time high this month. So use that to the maximum. OK, let's look at um, actually there's nothing really negative here. I feel like if you are looking for uh, work or looking for support, you just need to kind of look around you. Uh, there's there's energy to make new friends, even if you don't have them this month. The question is, do you want to invest the time to do so? Um, but I see a lot of support, a lot of support. All right. Everybody's favorite. We've got love coming up. And I actually got a card that has romance on it. I got to put glasses on because this has such small text. Um, Lavish the one that you love with your personal attention and affection. It's encouraging you to really spend time with the ones that you love and to spend time holding space for someone if you're looking for that love. So let's go into that. It's a nice segue. <clears throat> We're going to look at existing relationships, seeking out relationships, those that are looking for love and those that are single and happy and what it means for them. All right. If you are um, in a relationship this month, let's just turn the camera down. It's a little easier for this portion. If you're in a relationship, it already comes through and it feels like that's one of the main focal points. But the fact that the lovers is reversed means that, like I said, one or both of you needs a little validation. It feels also like that other person may need a lot more. So <clears throat> it's either more commitment, more love, more time. I feel like you can make it work if you want to. I also feel like it's OK for some of you if you need a little bit of time to explore something like 
travel for work, travel for life. This this would probably not be um, a married couple, but this could be someone that's in a, a a longer term relationship and just needs a little bit of time to sort things out. This is a good card for that. This is like I need. Yeah, like give me a month or let me get through this. But like you can ask for some time, not for forever because that person is impatient, but it does feel like you can ask for a little bit of time. You need you have a little bit of growing to do. And in marriages this month, I would say there, there's definitely conversations around money and uh, self-development. Sometimes we lose ourselves in those partnerships. So um, and we do see uh, for some of you, there could be a child that's coming in between you that you need to sort of focus on how to help them out. There could be a passion project or something because we have the partnership here and then we have um, a princess and a prince here. So basically a page and a knight. So this could be family pulling you two apart or it could be a couple of projects or investments that are kind of like pulling you apart. So you got to talk about the resource and the time spent on other things and then get back to one another. You will, but, but there's something that's kind of blocking that flow a little bit. Um, we have two queens, which I really like energetically. I don't read gender in cards because it doesn't make sense. Um, so basically, when I look at levels here, I'm, I'm just looking at queens are really receptive and uh, powerful and very good at sort of um, building new things and, and uh, creating new things. It's probably one of my favorite cards, even better than a king sometimes. So um, you're getting someone who's equally as receptive. This represents you. This represents who's coming in. So for you, um, what we're getting is heightened sensitivity and heightened receptivity, which we also got in the uh, channeled messages. And with your partner, we get someone that's a lot more willing to speak their mind or uh, to do what they want to do. And they may not always be as tuned into your sensitivity. So the important thing is engaging in communication because it looks like this person's a straight shooter. Um, I could be reading you and that could be the other partner, but basically making sure that the balance of um, listening, active listening is going to be important and heightened sensitivity from the other partner is important too. Uh, I feel like you can sort it out if that's the case. If you're looking for love this month, uh, you can manifest it. <laughs> we have the one of the best manifestation cards here and we have multiple partnership opportunities too. We have four of cups, lovers, and 10 of cups. Now, if you bring someone in, this could be fast and furious. Um, if someone comes into your life, it feels like it gets serious pretty quickly. Are you ready? For that level of commitment? That would be my question to you and or to the other person. It feels like one side is very ready and the other side is just sort of enjoying being with the other person. So um, there could be a marriage proposal. There could be someone that just wants to settle down and start a family for sure with the 10 of cups. So um, serious, it's going to get serious fast, I would say. Um, if you are looking for love, but you're single, I want you to get out and mingle based on the four of wands, the lovers and the 10 of cups. You could meet someone in a social sphere this month. Okay. Uh, so be open to that. Don't stay, you know, home. I mean, again, you have to if there's lockdown, but if not, um, this is a chance to sort of like interact more with other people. And again, this is six to eight weeks from now. So who knows where we'll be from six to eight weeks from now because things keep changing uh, with respect to the pandemic. All right. Um, if you're single and happy and not really focusing on attracting a partner, good for you, but also I don't think you can avoid, I've never seen such a populated sort of spread in a while here because we have Queen of Cups, Queen of Swords, we have the Princess of Discs, we have the pa uh, page or the uh, Prince of Cups here, the, the Knight of Cups. Then we have, you know, people, people, people. So you know what? You're going to have a lot of impact in being able to further your career, uh, make new friends, attract new opportunities. And I think it would be silly to retract from that. So be open to being surprised. Be Perhaps because you are so disengaged with it, there's a big attractive energy coming through. And I feel like you may be surprised by um, what comes knocking on the door. So I really like, I have to say, this is a um, beautiful kind of open energy when I'm looking at love and relationships for you this month, okay? So it looks nice. All right. Um, this destiny card aligns very nicely to the Eight of Cups. You may be resistant in take, to taking a break. Because what will happen? What will people think? Will everything go away? No. Um, in fact, what it's probably necessary for you to do that because like a bear, I, I, I talked last month about hummingbirds. Hummingbirds go into a very hibernation type state. Um, I think it's called torpor or something like that. But basically they can, they'll just sit on a branch and you think they're frozen or dead and they're not, but they kind of, their body heat and energy and breathing goes down to a very, very uh, low level just like a bear would. So sleep is important. 
a bear, I think of hibernating. So are you getting enough sleep? Are you taking enough time off? You can always come back to the work here. But the, the sleep, the rest, and this new opportunity on the horizon will help you grow and you can come back and do a better job. So if there's something that you feel burned out on, doesn't mean you have to quit it. Just take a break. Sleep on it. Definitely sleep on any major decision. And then if you need to take some time off and you've, for those of you that are working and you've saved up vacation days, take, take the time if you need to. All right. That's going to help you. When I, um, this, this card also reminds me of judgment because in the, um, I'm trying to think of which deck, Druidcraft? No, it's a different one. Wild, Wildwood. Wildwood has this as the judgment card. There's a big bear in front of it, an Aurora Borealis. So a lot of times with this, our, our cognitive decision-making is better after we rest um, on something. Sometimes we're protecting ourselves unnecessarily um, by just going, kind of like staying put. So I think it's time to move. Uh, the, that judgment card that I talked about is a portal too. The bear is right over top of the portal. Sometimes we're just afraid to move through it. So this bear is coming through saying, get some rest. You're strong enough to do this. And sometimes fear is that only, it's like a sentinel guarding that portal, but you can get past that. All right, so let me quickly write down the, the things that we wanna look at in the uh, soul path, and then we'll do a mini review before we do that. So I said resource management. Um, you know, you, you have, I feel like you have one of everything this month, which is good. Let's focus on what you can do with this relationship energy. So what's up with all the people and how can you, I, I guess what I would want to look at is how can you not get lost in this equation with all the people here? I actually want to focus on you. Um, and what is, what's this about? What can you do to maximize this? How can you make sure that you don't get lost? So I'm just going to put not lost and maximize <laughs> just to, um, jog my memory. All right, so we're going to do a mini review, and then we're going to uh, take a look at the soul path. We'll look at three different things, the resource management, not getting lost, and just a general directional card from the universe. And, uh, and then we'll go into a meditation, then I'll answer your question. All right, so quick mini review. Um, your totem today was the field mouse. The field mouse is often misunderstood, but actually is a sign of intelligence, of speed, and also uh, being resourceful they can run fast and when you take their size and equate it to a human being it's like 160 miles per hour 100 or 257 um, kilometers per hour pretty fast pretty darn fast um, it's reminding you of the ability for you to pick up speed to create more traction in your life right now and release a fear of success or failure like we were talking about this bear sometimes is coming through and it's scaring us but it's not really scary we can do this um, and that's what that's reminding you Things will start now and they can start to manifest more quickly if you allow them to do so. But you have to start to imagine that things will break through um, faster. I was fascinated, absolutely fascinated that mice have uh, an ultrasonic vocal uh, pattern that we can't pick up on. I already was kind of curious about the little peeps and chirps that we hear, but apparently there's even things that we can't hear. Uh, and that to me, I'm learning something new every day that I read for you guys because I have to learn about nature when I, when I work with the totem. So that's amazing. Um, and then I played you that little clip of them singing like a bird, like a little warbling bird. It was really cool. Um, so we don't even know the beginning. Like, I think it's the tip of the iceberg with a lot of life on this planet. This high frequency, however, does have a direct message for you. Um, it's saying to keep that high frequency in all that you say and do. It will inspire and it will attract. And guess what? You have some really great attractive cards here. Magnet, magnet, magnet. Um, so if you if you stay positive and if you speak in a positive way and think in a positive way, I believe that you can really pull in a lot of what we see here. Okay. Some people in your life may not be ready or able to hear what you're saying, possibly because they don't have the attention span, possibly because they haven't learned this lesson that good things can happen. Sometimes um, it's easier to believe the bad stuff, as, as I like to quote. Pretty Woman, that line from Pretty Woman, but the good stuff exists too. Um, your clairaudience is opening up this month. Your psychic skills in general are opening up. So listen to what's coming through. Um, sometimes you only hear what you want to hear and also vice versa. Others only hear what they want to hear. So try to open them up and open yourself up to possibilities. Don't wear yourself out. These uh, lovely little mice have a short attention span, not attention span, lifespan. Um, so it's like five months. So we want to make sure that um, you're not burning yourself out. That's why the resting cards were coming through. Also, there's a very short period here. I would say the next five to six months taking us to December. Um, it's going to be 
featuring openings of opportunity where they the window will open and close faster than you're used to. So you got to work with this higher and faster working energy. Um, consuming and uh, also balancing your resources is going to be something you want to pay attention to. Mice eat through a lot and do it quickly. Um, so you want to have a nest egg to make sure that you can plan for your future consumption of energy and resources as well. Uh, time to clean things up. <laughs> Mice are not clean. I can't defend them at all there. But they are reminding us that we need to clean our messes up as well, leave things in a better place than we found them. And that's just a great mantra in general, whether it's a job or relationship or any aspect of your life it should always be in a better place than what you found it in. Um, take the wheel and drive. We saw that coming through in the chariot here. Um, what you want to do is make sure if you're losing interest, if you're disengaged, you don't have time and you also can't afford to do that. So um, find out like maybe why you're not engaged with something and make a hard decision if you need to, to step away. Course correct, as we talked about, don't keep going down the wrong road. Um, ask for help if you need it. When you're experienced enough in your life, your GPS, your third eye is going to kick in. And oftentimes you'll know better than what other people tell you, irrespective of age or um, station in life or whatever, you, you might have the right thing, know the right path to do. So trust it. Um, it's bringing you in the right direction. Uh, keep the bridges open. You don't want to blow these up. It feels like it's going to be important. And we see here in the crowning position that that card and that message came through loud and clear. How much uh, good can you handle? I hope you can handle a lot because it looks like a good month ahead. There's disbelief. Some of you may watch this and think, I don't know what Nicholas is talking about. My life sucks. Bad things are happening. You just created and encouraged that to happen. I want you to open your mind up and think, you know what? This, this could, I'm really ready for some good news. Bring it on. Let's make this a great month ahead. It's a more powerful way to be. All right. We have the Princess of Discs at the center, page of uh, pentacles, basically. And it is about uh, making sure that you value yourself and that you convey that value to others, but you have to think it, feel it, and believe it first. And so some of you have a little bit of work to do in that area. Um, I really, really want you to express yourself and to take ownership over that expression here. Don't let other people mute you or quiet you or shush you. This is your chance to sort of speak up. Taking the reins is going to be great. We see so much support. And I even put that, you might be surprised. Well, actually, I talked yesterday about that in the lion's gate. Um, you might be surprised at how much support you get. We see that here for sure for you. Um, I like that we have evenly matched queens representing past and future, representing you and someone else. Focusing, however, on making sure that the sensitivity and the communication is balanced out, that you don't take things too personally. That can also be the princess of discs reversed. I'm, I'm taking this and putting too much energy on it because I'm sensitive. So all of that stuff is going to be important. You have an expansive opportunity on the horizon represented by Jupiter here. You don't have to burn the bridge. You can always come back. It's okay to take some time off for yourself. Literally, this card says take time out. So do it if you need to. Speak up, use your voice, use your vision, don't mute it. Um, you may need to sort of chop it into smaller pieces and kind of like, you know, I would say instead of trying to do a big download, do smaller downloads, but still keep the frequency and the authenticity of your voice. So many relationship cards here with the four of wands, with the lovers and with the 10 of cups. I love it actually for you. Very rarely. I mean, I don't know if I've seen something like this in a whole year probably. Um, come through. So some really positive energy. You must be doing something right. And I want you to believe in yourself this month because we don't want to push out any of these opportunities. Um, friendships matter the most this month. This is to me a card of commitment, friendship, longevity. So there's someone in your life that you can really deepen that bond with, and it doesn't have to be romantic. This can be a platonic card. This can also be an offering in love or in business, and it looks like a good one. Make sure that uh, you are validating, expressing gratitude, and also that you're receiving it. If someone says, you did a great job, say, oh, no, you're, you're crazy. Say, thank you. I worked really hard on that. Um, so accept a compliment and give compliments if you need to. Trust in your intuition. Develop your intuition. And uh, when it comes to long-term engagements, it looks like people want a commitment. They want to know where you stand. So you need to make up your mind. Where do you stand this month? That's going to be really important. Focus on the solar plexus this month, um, strengthening also your position in relationships. Uh, this is about re reclaiming, reclamation, I think, for many of you. Um, so that radiance that we see here is also about your ability to just sort of like shine a smile on someone and you can change their day. So remember how important body language is. 
You have really good cards this month. There is a couple of cards, or there are a couple of cards here that can be extremes. That can be the Ten of Cups, for instance, even Lovers. So giving into passion too much and kind of going overboard, working too hard, um, putting too much energy into relationship, losing yourself a little bit in that. Make sure that you're not doing that because that's not healthy. Um, we talked about just kind of maybe working with a dietitian or, or your physician to make sure that your diet is where it needs to be. For sure, we have the Eight of Cups saying it's a good time to make and break cycles, All right? You're also being led to something higher when we're looking at career here. So finding sanctuary, um, opening your uh, opening to your success, your spiritual success, opening that door. So if you're called to do something bigger, brighter, better, maybe take a sabbatical, maybe take some time off, sleep on it first, but it does feel like something's inviting you in. And I like all the support that I see here. So um, it does feel like it's a great time for you to create a contract, draft a contract, to engage other people. I mean, it's really, really positive for you. Um, the only thing that happens again with some of this is over delivering, over pleasing, um, getting lost a little bit in that. So maybe breaking that habit would be important there. With romance and relationships, uh, as we've been saying, people want to know where you stand. Some of these things could get really serious really quickly if you're looking for a new love or just found someone. If you're in an existing relationship, there's something tagging at your resources or possibly putting, there could be a third party, kind of putting a little bit of a wedge between you. Just take some time. I think together even, like you could just, Get some time away from the kids if you need to, or just get some time together and sort this out. A trip would be nice, um, the two of you on that trip. Maybe one of you taking some time away first, but I do feel like for this to work, we have four of wands, lovers, and ten of cups. Some time together to just decompress where you're not talking about all the responsibilities and all the things that are kind of holding you down and tying you down. Um, if you're not looking for love, it's just a really good time to partner up and to get interest in what you're doing. It's a great month. It's a great month for people. I, I can't uh, say anything negative about it, actually. The only thing that can get you off and maybe have this sort of um, impatience, the, the sort of grumpiness that we would associate with a bear happen is if you don't get enough sleep, if you're worn out, if you, uh, like I said, with the mouse, you don't want to burn yourself out and burn the candle at both ends because something has to give. All right, let's go into the soul path, looking at resource management. Nice segue into that card and that uh, message. So let's see what the comment is and what the message is on that. All right, so how can uh, everyone that's watching be a little bit more mindful of resource management? Um, what is the message? Okay, we, we actually have the queen of balance here, the justice card, and it's perfectly balanced. So it's, it's right, it's proper, it's good, it's the, the best time possible for you to step in and say what you need and do what's right. And if someone isn't doing their share, then delegate, then ask, then highlight the fact that this is the last time that you're gonna do all of that. So speak your truth. Uh, justice is very aligned with the Queen of Swords. Um, for some of you, by the way, this can also indicate a uh, necessary action, legal action, or putting something down in writing. So if you happen to be doing business with friends or family, it could be possible with all of these cards clearly define and delineate what the roles are going to be so that you are not going to step into some sort of weird uh, pattern that doesn't work. Make sure that the person's really committed there. Um, get it in writing is what I see. And then certainly uh, cut out things that you don't need to be doing. Balance is essential. But the thing is with the, the justice card here, this is telling me that you can find the balance if you want it. If someone's not paying enough, doing enough, Again, you might need to um, to use this card to or use this energy of speaking up to to make that balance happen. So again, a legal contract might be necessary here, but you're going to find it. You're going to do it. That's what I see with justice. The only thing with justice upright is she's sometimes contemplating but not communicating. So um, reversed, it's super clear. She's saying like enough is enough. When the card is upright, sometimes there's an inaction. Um, so don't overthink it. Just say what you need to say. All right, let's take a look at not getting lost in the shuffle, how to maximize the energy of all the community that's coming through, all this sort of love, all the relationship stuff. How, how do you do you amidst all of this? All right, we have the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. Um, all right, so now we're getting some resource cards here too. I want you to make sure that <clears throat> if you are focusing a lot on giving and maybe People are calling in favors and having you do legitimate work. There has to be an exchange. 
It doesn't necessarily have to be a monetary exchange, but you have to even the exchange. So reciprocity and making sure that you, you can sometimes say no. If you've helped someone move like five times and they've never helped you and you're tired, you could say, I'll help you out, but um, this is my day off. You need to buy me dinner or something like I, I can't or I you can pay me pay me half of what someone else would be paid, but pay me. We need an exchange because I'm tired and I can't keep doing this for free. So put put your foot down somewhere. The person may be kind of like a back for a second, but then they're going to realize it's still a good thing and you're worth the money. So for some of you, you haven't been asking for what you needed. I'm using money as an example, but it could just be reciprocity. Um, and the other thing here is it is important for you to spend some time and energy on your development. This could be personal development, like going to school. This could be physical health and well-being. This is you investing on in you. And to, in order to get that, you need to receive some things. So it is about asking for what you need, um, whether it's money, time, or support. You certainly can get the support this month based on all the cards that we just saw. So speak up. And this is a this there could be a new um, job on the horizon for you. Uh, so for some of you, I just want you to be open to that. The Wheel of Fortune is reversed, which is telling me it's time to do a course correct. That was cranking the wheel around in the car and kind of like doing a U-turn or taking a left or right turn. It's time to change the direction a little bit. And so with all these relationships, there's some of that too. Like where that's why I, I keep getting sort of that, uh, it's like an old song, where we go, do you know where you're going to, right? Theme from Mahogany. Um, so there's that sort of existential question. Do you know, Do you, are you sure? What do you want? Figure that out, okay? Because it, it, it's going to come up at some point over the next month or month and a half. All right, finally, let's look at a wild card here for whatever the universe wants us to see that we haven't had a chance to look at yet. And then you hold on to your question, and after the meditation, I'll ask it, uh, or I'll answer it rather for you. All right, so wild card in just your overall soul path. Welcome to the new subscribers. By the way, if you like what you see, um, hit that like button, hit the subscribe. It'll help my channel grow. I'm trying to get to the next milestone and I'll do a special video when we hit uh, 300,000. So share this with some friends if you think they'll like it. We'll do something cool then. All right, so back to wild card. What's the message? Okay, we've got the two of swords, indecision or rather decision time since the card is reversed. So here's what's kind of cool with the two of swords. Um, I sometimes feel like there is an illusion with the two of swords that you are trapped or that you can't do something sometimes what it is is that there is um, basically shades of gray in front of you so it's not a clear path the way that you can clarify the path is by speaking up is by asking for what you need is by going internally and thinking what do i want what do i want and what what feels to me to be the best you may be at a precipice in your life or at a fork in the road where you're just going to have to do the best and choose the best path that you can. And there may not be all the guarantees that you want, but as long as you think it out, you're going to be fine. Justice will not lead you down a bad path. She's going to help you see the, the pros and the cons, and then you're going to go. You're going to move towards it. Um, so that's it. There's Basically, if you sit too long and wait too long, the window will close. So what we're looking at for you right now is an important period of discerning and deciding, um, looking at it, evaluating it and thinking this is the best for right here for right now. And that's it. Um, it's kind of like when you're walking down the street, you don't like you just pick a path. You don't panic. You just sort of think, OK, I'll go here. I'll do this. I'll do that. There's always another direction to go if you need to. Uh, or it's like going into the fridge and deciding what you want to eat, uh, what you're going to cook. There's choices, but you can't get paralyzed. You, you make the best choice and you move on because you have other things to do. And that's kind of what the Two of Swords is saying. You've got better things to do than to worry about um, all of the little minutia. Uh, so you'll be fine. Trust your intuition. It's spot on this month. She will help guide you. The third eye will be open and you'll be able to uh, make it work. That's the, ultimately what kind of helps me get through the big indecisions in my life sometimes. Let's just make it work. I've got enough. I've figured it out. We're going to do this. We're ready. And I'm expecting something positive to come. All right. Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate that. All right, we're going to move on to the meditation. Stick around for this, though, because right after this, like I said, I'm going to help you with a silent question that you have. Um, as I said just a moment ago, the, the biggest and the best way that you can actually support the channel is to hit the thumbs up once during a video. If you've never subscribed, to subscribe. And then when it goes on replay, to comment, um, because basically engagement will help 
serve up this video. So if you don't have to give anything but a like, a subscribe, and a comment, and you make my day and you help this video. Um, if you want to follow me on social media to see all of those little cards that I write, um, my handle almost everywhere is Nicholas Ashbaugh, except on Twitter. And you can follow the, the pinned link up above. So don't worry about it if you didn't read all of that. And thank you right now to Jarena, to Monica, to everyone else that I didn't have a chance to say thank you to. Um, you can show support by giving super stickers right now or later um, by giving thanks using that button right by the share button. All right, let's get into the meditation. We're going to focus right now on helping you with, let's see, I'm looking at all of this. I feel like you're, you're solid when it comes to relationships this month. I think the one thing I can help you with is like self-worth and self-confidence so that you can really show up and uh, take advantage of all of this. We're going to focus on the solar plexus. This meditation will last about uh, two minutes and then we'll get to your final question that you have for me. So let's imagine that you are watching the rising sun, that you have uh, walked to the edge of your favorite beach and uh, the sand is soft underneath your bare feet. The sun is just starting to blaze over the horizon. Beautiful shades of orange that are um, kind of reaching out and wrapping around your body. Um, you feel a single ray directly coming into your solar plexus as the sun rises on the horizon. And as you watch that line that uh, kind of traces itself from the sun to you on the water, and it kind of ripples and you can see the movement, little light, um, basically particles moving around as well. Take a deep breath and really pull that powerful energy into your stomach, into your solar plexus, and then allow it to dissipate and move throughout your entire body. Nice deep inhale. Let it go. Perfect. You can repeat that a couple times as I'm setting up the meditation. Um, if you want to in this moment, you can also reach up your hands and really stretch. If you want to um, kind of do a sun salute in yoga, you can also do that. Um, meet the rising sun and say, I welcome you and I welcome the abundance and the opportunity and the fresh, clean slate that I'm getting with this day. Today is a new day. Even if it's if you're watching me in Europe and it's the close of a day, you can do this with the setting sun too. Just thank you for all that I've achieved. Let's make tomorrow even better. So wherever you're at in the world, you can work with the sun, but feel that connection coming through to your solar plexus. Allow it to light up your body. And imagine that if you were to take a step back and look at yourself, you would just see this brilliant um, energy saluting the sun. It would just be the shape of your body, but bright um, yellow or white or orange energy. And it's just sort of circulating around. You found your power here in this moment. I want you to feel your connection to the earth, uh, look up at the sky, and you can even kind of imagine that you're like the magician, channeling more of that higher energy, and then also grounding it in purpose. And in this meditation, as I play the singing bowl here, I want you to think, I am ready, I am worth it, and it is happening now, whatever it is that you're trying to create in your life. Just feel the readiness, the self-worth, and the movement and just focus on breathing as I play the singing bowl and think about whatever question you have for me. And then we'll take a look at that right after this. Take a nice deep breath, let it go. Imagine that you could draw a circle of light beneath you or a circle of light in the sand, I would say, and then see the light connect. And it's this disc now of energy. And imagine that this disc could uh, lift you up and kind of you could travel upon this disc towards your destination. Uh, imagine that this is gonna stick with you after today's meditation, you have this energy. You have the sun within you and you have a disc of light beneath you that's going to bring you further and faster than you imagine that you could get there, whatever your goal, whatever your dream, whatever your destination is. All right, gently open your eyes if you're ready to receive your final answer to your final question. Um, I want you to focus on whatever that question might be. You don't have to type it, just uh, think it. 
It's a good practice for clear audience skills. So say it or ask it in your head. I'm going to shuffle the cards and we're going to look at a collective answer to your question. All right, we've got the Queen of Pentacles. It is a yes. Um, Queen of Pentacles is one of the best cards for manifesting something. Um, for some of you that might be looking for a house or a home, that's a yes. That's basically the card of house and home. Uh, for those of you that might be looking to, to create something, whether it's birthing something like figuratively or maybe even starting a family, this is a really good card for that too. Um, it focuses on house, home, birthing, creation, and nurturing. So all of those things are things that you should be focusing on. It's also focusing on oneself. We have the little rabbit, which is a symbol of fertility as well, uh, and also speed, just like the mouse. Someone asked, why is the rabbit a symbol of fertility? Because it reproduces quickly. Um, and because it also, that, that fast motion, it has a lot of the same energy that of the mouse that I was talking about. It eats a lot, um, it doesn't live a long time, and it produces a lot. So what we're looking at here, again, is a period where there might be a lot of like rapid growth. There might be some turnover, even in these groups of friends that we're seeing and the things that are going on but it's bringing you to the next level. So work with it. Definitely a great card to end on. You have great energy today. Um, you know, we have, the, I would say the only card here that's a little bit uh, off or that could pull you, pull you off is the two of swords, but that has to do more with what is in your own head. So I feel, feel like we kind of like solved that one. Um, so let's do a quick mini review of all the cards in front of me and then we'll wrap up for today. All right. Make your mind up, <laughs> make some decisions, find the balance that you need in your life. Justice is here to help you with that, but she does require a decision in order to finalize things. Um, you're worth it. Um, just like that old hair commercial, <laughs> you're worth it. So you should invest in yourself um, and you need to get what you deserve out of um, in, uh, energetic exchanges. So just make sure that you're getting something back for the energy that you're putting into things. Um, there may not be a black and white answer. It might be a shade of gray. And what you're going to have to do is figure out the best thing. And look at, by the way, this person's kind of sitting on that disc, but it's a earth disc. And I was thinking of a solar one. So just um, make up your mind and do the best because you did get the high priestess card, which is going to be able to help you figure things out. And finally, we talked about this. It's a time for creation, for nurturing, for bringing things forth. Um, and there's also a, ra a rapid sort of energy around this. So things are going to start to pick up. The movement's going to start to happen. Uh, in such a way that you may look back come November or December and think like where the past two or three months go. So be prepared for that rapid mo movement and motion. Thank you so much for being present, for coming through today. It was a beautiful reading, some really great energy for your sign. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that manifests for all of you. One last time, if you liked what you saw here, please hit the thumbs up. We're um, actually a little over half. So if you haven't done it once, do it once. You can't do it twice. It's not like Facebook. Subscribe to. Um, I noticed that sometimes over 60% of the people that look at the channel haven't subscribed or don't subscribe. So that'll help me out a lot if you do that. And finally, um, if you're a fan of sci-fi or fantasy, I have a book. It's called The Luminous Ones. Um, it's on my website. You can click on the link and check it out. It's like for fans of Lord of the Rings or Dune, that kind of energy. Otherwise, just show up here. Um, I'm going to put a quick link to my schedule. All the September dates are live on my um, website. I will be back later this week to read for Virgo and Libra on Thursday and Friday. Like I said, I'm going to explore doing all Sundays as collectives, which would mean I would add an extra reading. So I would be doing um, 16 readings. We'll see if I can do that um, starting next month, but it's 15 this month. So the next three Sundays will be collectives. And um, and then every, every Monday, Thursday, and Friday, I read for the other signs. So, um, but I'm live Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Friday, unless otherwise announced. And I will be doing um, probably once a week, a, a little tiny one on Instagram for the next few weeks here. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. I don't do as much of an announcement. So you just want to follow me there and you can click on, um, let's see if I have a link here, if you want to join me on Instagram. And that's everything for today. So here's Instagram if you want to join me there. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks to, to Maria for helping out. Thanks to all of you for showing up. It was great to see you and uh, I wish you all the best. All right. Uh, so again, I will be back later this week. Set your reminders and have a good one. Okay. Bye-bye.